is important to the community, not just as a food source, but as a meeting point for the community members to see each other and build relationships. So that's half of it. You know, half half of it does come around the food, but it's nice to get to know each other. It is a great job building the community. I've met so many people here on a weekly basis that come in for their for themselves, for you know, cooking for their kitchen, asking any kind of restaurant buyers, you know, what they might do with this and that product. And so it's such a it's it's a great thing to have. It's really cool because you can tell how passionate they are about what they do, and they just like. Um, they're really into whatever they are selling, so I'm, I feel good eating it, knowing that these guys put passion and they love what they do. It's beyond fruit and vegetables. It, it's, it's, um, well, it is a sense of community. You, know, you, you, you see the same people there at the same time, week after week. So it's, you know, I grew up in England where people go down to the pub and see their friends. Um, here, you can go to the market. And, and see your friend. It, it's a social event almost, you know. So, um, and it, it's it's bringing um, good food onto people's tables. You know, the, not only the restaurants, but the you know obviously the biggest market are the general public. And My name is B.D. Douch and I have Earth Trine Farm. Our specialties are the herbs and our varieties of lettuces. And we grow broccoli for the side shoots, so like broccolini. Those are some of our most popular things. And then a lot of our obscure things like per, uh, Pakistani mulberries, our figs, our Valencia oranges, which we leave on the trees to ripen slowly instead of picking them all at once so they develop more and more flavor and so those are the things we're most known for. What made you decide to make it a business in your career? Uh, the, within the first season really we had surpluses of cherry tomatoes um, and some culinary herbs that we had growing and so we went to the co-op and said, oh, we've got these cherry tomatoes. You, do you want to buy any? And they bought them. And I went, whoa. And then uh, over the years, we planted a little more specifically to sell. And then I, I had my uh, culinary herbs, which I, we made a solar dehydrator for the herbs. This is 1977. And then in 1978, somebody started a farmer's market in Santa Barbara, the first one. And so we started selling at the market, just the surplus from the garden. And that's why the farm that I have is kind of designed like a garden. It's very diverse. I said, that, you know, we had a hundred things. I just can't resist planting everything that I like. And then people ask for things, uh, plant that. People bring me seeds, could you plant this? So it kind of evolved that way, unintentional, just took its own shape. Um, what's the harvest, or what's the season like? This, this well, the, we have a 12-month growing season here, although we do have winter that does get down below freezing, at least anywhere from 30 to 80 nights out of the winter. And this year is a drought year, which we have periodically. Um, beautiful, sunny every day and cold at night. And so we still get harvest. During the winter we grow greens. Because we have our other farm in Carpinteria, we're able to plant a lot of the uh, cool weather crops during the summer when it's too hot to grow them in Ojai. So in Ojai we grow summer vegetables and summer herbs and then at that time we have our broccoli and lettuce and radicchio growing in Carpinteria. Um, when and why did you start participating in the in farmers markets? Well, as I had said, we have our we had our garden going 
and somebody who we knew really well who had a small farm and planted an orchard and was kind of one of the older ringleaders of organic gardening and, and small-scale farming in the Santa Barbara area. He started a farmer's market and it was the first one that I knew of anywhere. I'd never even heard of the concept. And this was 1978. And we had one small one in Isla Vista. And then the next one was at the Santa Barbara Mission. And then the next one was in the parking lot of the Santa Barbara County Bowl where it lasted for some months or maybe even a year before it moved to the parking lot of Santa Barbara High School. And so we would, got into it right from the start. And we would bike cart a little caravan of, of gardeners from Isla Vista to Santa Barbara with pulling bicycle carts full of our produce, flowers, cherry tomatoes, the herbs, our table. And uh, it was just so much fun. And I was hooked. That was the way to go. You get to deal directly with people, with the consumers and be part of a community and share your joy of farming, your joy of life, because there's a lot of joy in it. Usually when things go wrong, you're at the farm and your frustration has an outlet and you just bear down. And by the time you get out to the public and you've got all your beautiful produce, that's the best of the best and is the smiling face of your farm. And so you present that and that brings joy and appreciation from the people that you're uh, supplying the food to or flowers. And so it really brings out the best in everybody. And the energy level gets picked up and it becomes a celebration of life and as well as a culinary celebration. So there's so many dimensions to it, way beyond simply feeding people. Well, we certainly have a symbiotic relationship with the community and the people that come to the market, most of them. Every so often you get somebody who just wants their stuff and wants to go, but in general, people are so happy that we're dedicating our lives to providing them with food and recipes and health tips and jokes and they get to see you and your family and get to know you completely. You know, I've always taken all my kids to the market. My wife comes sometimes and, and uh, they've known us for the whole time. And so we know them when their kids are around, they bring them to the market. We're, it's just one big family. It's like a family reunion every Tuesday afternoon, Saturday morning, Sunday morning. Oh, did you ever do shopping at the farmer's market and then go to Vaughn's? <laughs> Easy. You know, it, it's the, the, the quality of, of the produce that you can find, the freshness of the produce that you can find, um, the variety, and the care that goes into producing it. Um, huge, huge factors. So, um, you know, it's, it's freshness, it's flavor, um, it's just a much better product, it, it really is. And um, most of it is organically grown from the market. Um, I think with BB it's probably 100% organic. And uh, you know, you, you've met the man, you know, he's, he's, he's dedicated. He's, he's, um, he makes you want to cry he, he, with, with how dedicated he is to producing the very best vegetables, herbs, whatever. And um, I was always struck by, he said something, we, we actually did a couple of dinners here with him. Um, you have heard of dinners with a winemaker, we, we started doing dinners with the farmer, which was always kind of a fun thing. And, um, you know, when, when you have BD here as a guest farmer, people are just enraptured by his depth of knowledge and his... I, you know, his, his care, his soul is in, is in what he grows. And he once said to us that 
Um, it's not what I take home from the market that counts, it's what I bring to the market. And I don't know if you've heard that from him as well, but I just think that that really sums up his, his philosophy as far as I'm concerned. And, um, you know, it gives me something to think about too. You know? I mean, I, I, like to, I like to put on, on my plates something which is, is equally as special as, as, as he is bringing to the market. So, he's a good man.